Hello folks and welcome to Four Season Backpacking. Please subscribe for the latest outdoor adventure videos. Morning folks. Um, well this is all the uh, fuel I bought with me. Um, this little bag here. And that's even got the cooker in as well, my hexi stove. And these are the uh, solid fuel cubes. Very good in uh, cold weather. So this is uh, the hexi stove. And this is one of the solid fuel cubes that I will use with it. May take about two of these or one of these to boil some water. Okay, folks. Well, I've got a new uh, lighter to try out. It's a refillable uh, jet lighter I got off Amazon. I think it was about £13. Uh, there you go. So that is the hex stove on the uh, go. Managed to uh, light it okay. There is actually no wind at the moment. Can you believe it? I've got um, a windshield here. Don't need it, but I'm just using it to stop the uh, smoke coming back into the tent. That's one thing I don't like about the hexi stoves. Uh, the cu the cubes do give off quite a, quite some bad fumes compared to. Um, gas cookers so you want it in a very well ventilated area definitely do not cook use one of these inside your tent or or the porch so I've got it as far out the porch as possible well that's going well now um, first I'm boiling some water uh, for my meal which I will put in the boiling water and so that will save me cleaning the uh, pan out. If uh, rather than putting it in straight into the pan, I just put this into the boiling water and it'll be ready to eat. So that should be my uh, meal ready. So that's ready to eat. Um, it's my all day breakfast by Wayfarers. And for a coffee, I am having a Lion's number three coffee bag okay folks so it is very misty this morning so i've decided i'm going to get the tent down before sunrise because there's going to be no view anyway and i'm going to try and make it for the first bus at 10 o'clock uh, so there'll be no drone footage this morning unfortunately so i'm going to get the tent down right folks that's all packed away it is annoying of course because i've got the drone on my camera kit with me it would have been nice to have a view, but that's the price you pay for photography and droning. You always hope to get that uh, perfect sunrise, uh, perfect mountain view, but today it's just it's just not going to happen. And I, um, I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to rush for the bus uh, for the next destination. Apparently today is going to be windy, so I'm not sure where that's going to be yet. Um, so probably be no droning again today. So that's the price you pay for being a drone and carrying all the heavy batteries, spare batteries and drone kit and um, obviously spare batteries for everything else and all that food for the week's camping. That's why my bag is uh, so big. But in fact, that's probably the lightest um, winter pack I've had for a long time. I'm, I'm continually trying to make it as lightweight as possible while remaining very uh, safe in the great outdoors and keeping warm. Well, folks. It's a lot better now. Uh, I definitely don't think there's going to be a sunrise. I think I made the right decision to come down before sunrise uh, to catch this bus. I've got a few options where I can go really today if it's going to be bad winds. I could go to uh, Castle Rig Stone Circle, camp near there, um, or uh, I mean that is high up as well itself, but uh, maybe I can find a sheltered spot. And um, or I could go to Long Meg, uh, Stone Circle, um, near Penrith. That's got trees around it, I think. I think there's some sort of sheltered spots around there, the camp. There's some farms area though, but if I put my tent up at night, it should be alright. Um, 
no point camping high up if it's going to be high winds. I'm not going to be, do, be able to do any droning anyway. Um, obviously I like doing hiking. I come out to get outdoors, but um, my passions are uh, photography and droning and hiking. And it's good if I can, because uh, I'm carrying such a, like I said, because I'm carrying such a heavy weight with all the batteries for the drone and the controls and all that, you know, all the gear I'm carrying. It's good if I can actually uh, get some footage. Okay, so this is uh, my view coming down now. Now it's getting lighter. I was camped up a lot higher up, but it was, uh started walking when it was uh, dark, so I couldn't really film the view then. Um, you can see it's still quite misty. There's much more misty higher up. Um, like a good picture actually um, when it's a little bit lighter because I've got a compact, so it'd be a bit grainy if I took a picture now. Oh, that's a night, it would be a nice picture of the pikes over there. Still too dark for my uh, to do some droning, really. It'd be pretty grainy at the moment if I use the, it's the um, old Maverick Pro I've got. If you've got the new Maverick Pro, the Maverick Pro 2, you possibly get away with it, but you got, but you got, for that you got to carry a whole lot of extra weight on top of the weight I'm carrying already. So that's why I still got the old Maverick Pro. I think it's better for what I do than the the new uh, Maverick Pro Two. It's just too big. I mean Mavic Pro, not Maverick. <laughs> I keep saying that. Yes, yeah, Mavic, Mavic Pro, not uh, Mavic. Pondering whether to get the drone out in a second. I will do in a bit. I think that'd be a good shot. Surprisingly, I got some uh, drone footage done, but uh, it's probably going to be a bit grainy because how dark it was, unfortunately, but I suppose it's better than nothing. Um, it's not as misty as I thought it was going to be down here in the valley. But higher up, I'm looking behind us, behind me. It's uh, still very misty. You can see some uh, people coming up. Right, well, just at the start of the going up bit down there. Um, last night, only two people went past my tent. About 10, 10 o'clock at night. Um, looked like they probably had ice axes. Um, yeah, you really shouldn't go up in the uh, beyond the snow line, really, in the mountains without an ice axe. Um, I have got an ice axe, I just didn't bring it because I wanted to save on weight. And I thought, I'll just go places where I don't need an ice axe, like in the mountains, because there are places that you, you don't really need an ice axe. But I've got snow chains with me because they're light. I, you, I mean, I used to take crampons as well with me, crampons and stuff. But that's before the days... I used to carry a drone as well. I used to carry a camera. I carried an SLL camera actually then, so that's pretty heavy. If you've got the lenses as well, probably had one or two lenses with me as well. Thinking of buying some icebreaker thermals. Um, I've had them in the past. They're very good. The Merino are uh, wool. Um, they're so warm, but they're like about, you're talking about almost a hundred pounds for the top and a hundred pounds for the bottoms, which is extremely expensive for thermals, but I have to say, like, 
you just do not get cold in these things, man. They're, they're like, if you're going to go out in um, wintery conditions in the mountains, like they're ideal. Uh, but if anyone knows some uh, cheaper thermals, that um, maybe merino ones that are cheaper, I don't care about the brand name, just as long as they're good, uh, let me know in the comments. Well, well, this part of the lake, so I'm guessing it's sheltered from the wind. I mean, it's as calm as it can be, really, to be honest. So, I'm guessing that wind must be on the, the, the tops, higher up. There certainly was no wind where I was camping last night, it was just a breeze. Um, I was expecting it to pick up, but I'm glad it didn't because, as I keep ranting on about, uh, the pegs weren't in very well. So, I, even though I've got a good tent, um, that means jack shit, basically, because, you know, the pegs are not in well, so... But I had no other choice but to camp there, so sometimes you do have to camp in sort of more risky areas with incoming weather, like, uh... But I was alert, I had my stuff ready if I had to exit the tent in case there were some big gusts. But, um, yeah, a lot of um, really experienced uh, mountaineers have died from gusts of wind just blowing them off the face of the mountain. So up there is the Cambram Way, long distance footpath that goes through Cumbria. And then I went up Esk House Pass up there. I was camped up there, right up near the top of the, um, the uh, saddle there. So it's a bit slippy. Wow, hopefully I make it to the uh, the bus in time. Still haven't made up my mind where I'm going to camp tonight. Look folks, it's Herdwicks. That's your uh, Sheep of Lake District. They've got some lovely wool on them actually. Normally they're quite scabby looking. It's actually quite nice light at the moment uh, for photography. Got some really moody sort of like clouds. Yeah, it's a very good day for photography and videoing in fact. Over there, I don't know if you can see it, there's a road going up there. I think it's one of the steepest or highest passes in the Lake District, or one of them and it goes past Hard Knots Fort on the other side of the uh, highest point it gets to um, well worth a look as I've said, I'm sure I've camped there once before uh, I've been there a few times I was thinking of going there last night but uh, it was just too far a walk I, I probably wouldn't have got there I probably would have put the tent at the side of the road so I thought it was better to come up here Yay, the sun's making an appearance. <laughs> that's beautiful. Oh, that's absolutely stunning light. Why couldn't it have been like that this morning when I took the tent down? Oh boy, I was at the tent. I've got 12 minutes to get to the bus. And that is the problem with using public transport. You have to be on a timetable, strict timetable. But the good thing about using public transport is you didn't have to come back to the same place you walked from. But in fact, actually today, I had to because there's no public transport the other side of Scarfell. Or well, I can hitchhike and I've hitchhiked there before, I've even walked from there to the coast before to get to the nearest transport. Um, but anyway, Today I'm getting in the bus, so I'm walking back to uh, the, oh, what do you call that? It's, well, it's the village at Great, end of Great Langdale, anyway. Okay, just about to have some uh, fish and chips in uh, Keswick, or Keswick. It's pretty good. Well, folks, I'm just on the uh, Cambran Way, uh, just leaving Keswick. Um, just realised there's actually a path over the fence there. Oh well. Um, yeah, not been up this way for a while. I have actually been up on the Cambran Way this way once at least. 
also you can walk out this route um, from Keswick um, to walk up uh, Sked Sked Skiddow. Skiddow, is that what you say? It? I've been up there a few times. And that is just up there, Skiddow. You can't see the top of it, it's in clouds. Yeah, it looks like they've got a new walkway here. It looks like another housing estate going up. And um, got a sign for uh, Skiddow there, four miles from here. To the top, I guess, the summit. Well, just going over a busy dual carriageway A road. Can't remember the name of this little hill in front of me. Well, it's a little for Lake District standards. Um, well, I believe it's got a good view of Keswick from the top. I'm sure I've been to the top of it before. Unfortunately, I think it's time to put the waterproofs on. It's starting to rain. Look at that view. Well, it's raining now anyway. It has been for a while. Um, this is the way to Skiddle. Here you've got um, a war memorial, the way it looks of it, on the way up to uh, Skiddle. In fact, it's um, a memorial to uh, shepherds up on Skiddle, apparently, or to a shepherd. I'll put the information up on the screen. So heading up that way, that's going to the top, going towards the top of Skiddle. But I think the point just over there, the next one, highest point, which you have to go up that, then another mountain, which is Skiddle, just over there, you can just see the peak. So folks, there's my uh, camping spot by the uh, memorial to the shepherds of uh, Skiddle. And over there we got um, some herdwicks. Hello, hello there. <laughs> well folks, um, it's raining tonight. It was last night. Um, the spot I picked is just breezy, um, but apparently it's supposed to be 60 mile per hour wind, so that must be just on the mountain tops. Um, and I've camped in a bit of a dip, so um, it's uh, a little bit more wind sheltered where I've camped. Um, as I said, I've, as you've seen, um, I've camped by the um, memorial for um, the Skid Skiddle um, Shepherds. You got a product you want me to test? Well, I'll put it through its paces in the great outdoors. I'll give you my honest, professional opinion. A fair review.